Hello and welcome to another video from Man and Machine. My name is Sean Arm, I'm one of the cam experts at Man and Machine, and today we're going to be having a look at turning inside of Inventor. Now we won't be going into too much detail about why and what to do, we're just going to be having a look at some of the functionality that we can use. So the first thing we want to do within this is start with our setup. So we're going to click setup, let's open this dialog box on the left as it usually does. First thing we're going to do is turn on turn mean, turning or mill turn, because we're now in a turning operation, we don't want to be milling. We're working in our primary spindle, we can also set up to work in the secondary. First thing we need to do is set up our rotary axes. So there's our rotary axis, and I want to be machining from this end. Also, because I've got my y axis and my x axis and this and it's running through this slot in the middle, I need to tell the model that it is a spun profile, which we can do down here. Next we've got our chuck reference, so I'm going to say it's model back plus 40mm, so I'm holding at least 40mm of this part and I have some more stock in the chuck as well. Now let's go to our stock. I'm going to be using a relative size cylinder, I'm going to be adding 2mm around the outside, 2mm on the front, 50mm on the back, and I'm going to round up to the nearest one which will actually increase the rate of diameter of this by a slight piece. Next our program, and I'm going to leave this program in the exactly as it is for this demo. So first off, the first thing we want to do is face this part. Now if we look from a side view and click face, it's already pulled a tool through and given us a preview file of what the toolbox is actually going to be doing. So let's put in the correct tool we want to use, which is this right-handed tool. You can see again, it's doing this one pass. What I want to do is I want to do multiple passes and I'm going to add a very slight finishing pass. I'll do this in the Passes tab. We'll accept this. Now as you can see, when you click on this toolpath again, this yellow preview updates. So we can see this is our stock, and this is the preview. So it's giving us some indication of what has been machined and what hasn't been. So like a live stock update. Now we're going to go through and profile the job. So let's click profile. Now two things we don't want it to do, we don't want it to dip into this gap, and we don't want it to come down here and machine this part. But I do want it to machine as close to the chuck as possible. So what I'm going to do is come down here and turn off our axial and radial grooving. So this will allow the tool to come up to this stop and it will just follow this line. Now in our limit, I'm going to say the back end needs to be model back plus 45 millimeters. So this is going to sit away from our chuck stop, from our chuck, without having to worry about hitting our chuck. And because I've already faced it, I can now start from model front. So let's accept this and see what it gives us. That's pretty good, but I also want to finish this with a separate tool. So I've decided that I actually I want to make sure that this is finished with a separate tool to the roughing tool. So I'm going to edit our tool path, go into passes, and turn off our finishing pass. Turn on our stock to leave. So now we can see that we're leaving a bit of stock, and we're just adding a final finish pass in here. And to generate that finish pass, the quickest and easiest way is to right click, create a derived, click profile, and change our tool. So I have in here a right hand finish tool. It's the same tool but just finish it. In our passes, we turn off stock to leave, turn off roughing pass and it automatically turns on finishing passes for you. So there we have our finishing tool path. Now I want to groove out this and back, back turn this area here. So let's go ahead and use groove. And this looks like quite a small tool. Let's check our tool and it is. We have a large roadie grooving tool here. Let's select this tool. And again, we want to limit it. We want to say we want you to work from between this area and model back plus 45. Let's accept this and see what it gives us. It's starting from up here, and this is due to the fact that it doesn't know that we've already removed this material out. If we go back and edit this toolpath, we can turn on rest machining. It's going to look at the previous operations, work out what we have and haven't machined. Now, as you can see, this toolpath actually starts now at the correct level. Again, it's still adding a finishing toolpath, which we don't want it to do. We add it, go to passes, turn off our finish pass, add some stock to leave. Now we can see it's generated the toolpath and left some stock on. So now we want to back turn it. So let's go into profile. In our tooling, we need to pick an appropriate tool. And I've got this sharper left-handed tool here. Let's select this. Now, one thing we first want to do, we're outside profiling. We're not front to back, now we're now going back to front. We also do not want it to dip into this gap here at all, so we'll turn off axial grooving. 
We need to limit it again. So our front is still going to be a selection up to this edge and our back is going to be a selection again. We're going to say work from this edge. So we're now telling it to work from this edge to this edge to get a nice finished surface here. In our passes, we want to turn off roughing passes because we just want a finishing tool path. So let's see how that's generated. That looks good. Doesn't look like it's attacked any stock here. And we've now run this finish. So last but not least, we now need to add this groove. The best way to do that is using single groove. So we're selecting single groove, selecting our tool, which I have this correct size tool here. In our selection, we select the front of the groove and tell it to work behind the selection we've made. Accept this. Now when we simulate, we'll face the job. We're going to profile it as far back as we can, allowing for the chuck. Speed this up a touch. When I'm finishing, groove out the area where we need to back turn. Come in and back turn and add our two grooves. So that is as quick as easy as turning gets. One advantage with the turning, because you're in a mill turn operation, you can also go ahead and mill this part. To do that, we'll just, for instance, choose this pocketing tool. We'll pick the tool, it's already selected an 8mm flat. We'll go change our tool orientation to allow for the fact that it's on the side. Choose our pocket, into passes, turn on a finishing pass of 0.2. Use multiple depths of 2mm. Using even step downs. And we'll work from a selected OD, which is this OD, and accept those changes. And as you can see, we're now milling this pocket as well. So in short, Turning an inventor is um, very simple, very easy, but still gives you plenty of freedom to do, um, to do to turn in the way you want to turn. We haven't covered threading and chamfering and secondary spindle and spindle uh, movements. But if you want any further details or a more in-depth demo, please contact Man and Machine. I'll leave a slide up at the end, which will have all our contact details on, and or it will be in the description below. Thank you for watching.